I'm posting this here uh, because I don't really trust the local media to make it accurate. They kind of delete or add to whatever they want. This is about uh, the Yuma County justice system being very, very corrupt. Case in point, two defendants. Number one, Andrea Ducos. On February 3rd, 2014, while under the influence of alcohol, operating a motorcycle without a driver's license, struck and killed 96-year-old Lucy Ann Sears as she was walking her dog on the sidewalk. Ducos picked up her motorcycle and said, I'm sorry, lady, and drove off, then hid the motorcycle in her friend's garage. Ducos later returned to the scene, but was not arrested. After the police reports were filed, there were five charges. She was charged with negligent homicide, aggravated assault, causing death by a motor vehicle, consuming alcohol under the age of 21, and driving without a license. The adult that provided the alcohol was charged with contributing to the delinquency of a minor. Her charges were dropped by the Yuma City Prosecutor. Her name was Gabriella Pettis. As for Ducos, Roger Nelson, who's the chief criminal deputy attorney, elected to drop all the charges. The Ducos case was then passed to juvenile court where the Honorable Judge Reeves found probable cause for all charges to be tried in Superior Court. The case went back to Superior Court where William Katz took it upon himself to drop all but one charge under the guise of a plea agreement. Of course, Ducos took the plea agreement, uh, relieving her of the other four charges uh, one charge, $150,000 fine plus 83% surcharge and a lengthy prison sentence of two and a half years. That's on a single charge. Judge Kenworthy accepted the plea agreement and sentenced Ducos to six months in county jail with no fine. Now, for case number two, James Sears was fishing when approached by an Arizona fishing game. When asked for his license, Sears couldn't find it. The game warden issued Sears a citation, fishing without a license. He told Sears to try to find said license or get a duplicate, just present it to the court and he'd be dismissed. Sears went to court with the license in hand. Judge Torek read the charge and asked Sears, how do you plea? Sears said, not guilty. I have my fishing license right here. Judge Torek then told Sears that he's entitled to a court-appointed attorney. Sears told the judge what the game warden told him, and Torek stated that the game warden didn't know the law. I don't know why a game warden wouldn't know the law. Sears was later notified by mail that attorney Paul Abate was assigned to him and to contact him immediately. Over the next 60 days, Sears called Abate more than 30 times leaving a message and a callback number. Sears first met Abate in the courtroom on the day of the pretrial conference. Abate said he managed a good deal for Sears, uh, that the deal was plead guilty and pay a $200 fine versus possibly a $1,500 fine and four months in jail. Sears asked Abate to motion for dismissal without pre or with prejudice. Abate said, no way. And Sears then told Abate he wanted a jury trial. Again, Abate says, no way. Sears then said he might plead guilty if the fine would be the same as the DUI hit and run driver that had killed his mom. Abate laughed and again said, no way. When Sears' case was called, he asked that Abate be removed from his case. Torek reluctantly agreed and said that she would appoint a different attorney, but warned Sears that a different one would even be worse and that an attorney had no obligation to have contact with the defendant. I don't know how that works. Sears now has two options. Number one, take the plea offer, plead guilty and pay the $240, or plead not guilty 
and face a bench trial with the possibility of a guilty verdict subject to a $1,500 fine and four months in jail. Now, Sears has seen Torek in action on more than one occasion and believes that she displays a racist point of view. On one occasion, she told a Hispanic defendant she would forgive a $9,000 fine if the defendant would come up with $20. And just moments later, had an elderly white homeless person handcuffed and sent to jail because he was a few hundred dollars behind on paying his fine. On another occasion, Sears was actually on trial in front of Judge Torek. It was early morning and Torek was late getting into the court. The court came to order. Torek looked bad. Her hair was a mess. While questioning the state's only witness, a DPS officer named Luna, Torek had her head down on her desk. She appeared to be tired or hungover at 8 a.m. in the morning. During Luna's testimony, he admitted by his own words that all seven points on the report that he submitted, which brought Sears to court in the first place, were false. Basically a lie. Luna should have been impeached as a witness and the charges dismissed. But instead, Torek looked right at Sears and said, he, meaning Luna, is a professional and you're guilty. Again, just pay the fine. A white guy against a Hispanic. The only thing that hasn't been mentioned so far is that Ducos' father is a member of law enforcement and Sears is a senior citizen who couldn't find his fishing license. Now you be the judge. Thanks for watching and I hope this video gets lots of hits so that the citizens of Yuma may be better informed.